why you should get into government contracting as a minority owned business. That's what this video is about today. I'm diving into the five things you need to know before you make the decision as to whether you will dive into government contracting or not. It doesn't matter whether you're just starting your business, you've already been in business for a while in the private sector, or you're just venturing off into government contracting, this video is for you. This video is going to tackle exactly what you need to know before you make a decision about government contracting for your business. For the best government contracting and small business advice, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so that you're notified every week when we put out a new video right here on the channel every Thursday. And we go live too sometimes. government spends billions of dollars every year with small and minority owned businesses. If you're not in the government contracting game, you're leaving money on the table. What I'm about to share is intended to help you better understand the benefits of being a minority owned and small business as a government contractor. The first thing I want to share with you is set aside. So what are set aside? Set aside basically in a nutshell is that you have a particular certification. Here we're talking about minority uh, businesses, small businesses. So we're talking about the various certifications. If you have one of the certifications, the government have categories of which they set money aside, contracting dollars each year based on those categories. Okay, so let's talk about the categories that we're going to cover here today as it relates to minority-owned businesses. We're talking about, at the state level, we're talking about your minority business enterprise certification. We're talking about your DBE, disadvantaged business enterprise certification. We're talking about your MWBE, your woman minority business enterprise certification. And then also at the state level, you have a, a state hub certification. So we're talking about those types of certifications that are given to minority owned businesses, as well as the small business certification. At the federal level, we have your WOSBE, woman owned small business. We have your let me see, EDWOSB, which is your economically disadvantaged woman-owned small business. You also have small business. Uh, you also have services able vet and the veteran certifications, okay? Now, also at the federal level, we have what we call the federal hub zone certification as well. And then the other one that everyone comes to me about, and in most cases, if you're coming to me, you're just getting started in government contracting and you're not ready for it anyway, but it is the 8A program. So I did want to throw it out there in case you heard the name. Yes, I know about the 8A certification, but if you're just getting started, that's not something you want to look at yet. So I don't want to spend time here on this video with you guys and it's not something that's going to serve you right now. Okay, so we're talking about your state level, certifications as well as your federal and you need to know the difference because it will relate to your customer which certifications you need to have and who accept those particular certifications okay so let's talk about the steps to applying before I dive into some numbers and statistics for you because I know you want to know the actual numbers right okay so the steps to, to becoming um able to do work at the federal level is one, you need to get registered in the SAM registration. Step one. Step two is of course you apply for any certifications for which you have. Now here's the thing that a lot of people uh, miss out on and some states are different than others, 
but they do require a two-year minimum of being in business in some cases. Again, each state is different and they're ran separately. So you do have to check with your local state agency and see what all of the requirements are. Now, at the certification level, to qualify is also some other things involved outside of the two-year minimum if that's one of the requirements. One of the other big requirements is that whoever is applying for the certification must have a majority ownership in the business. So if you're applying, for example, for a woman-owned certification, that means that woman-owned has to hold 51% ownership. That's majority ownership in the business, okay? So don't leave me yet. Stick around because I'm giving you some stats. Down below in the comments, I wanna know, share with me what certifications you currently have or and which certifications you are currently working on getting for your business. Okay, let's break down the numbers. So I wanna break down the numbers of what's available for you if you qualify for one of the uh, minority-owned certifications, okay? Okay, so I have my little cheat sheet here, okay? Because it's numbers, statistics, and I wanna give you the real deal. Okay, so 23% of all prime contracts are, con how do I want to say it, uh, set aside for small businesses. 5% of prime and subcontracts are to be set aside for small disadvantaged businesses. And then 5% of woman-owned small businesses for prime and subcontractor. And then you have 3% of prime contracts to hub zone certified people. And then you have 3% of prime and subcontract work to be um, given to service disabled veteran owned small businesses. So as of this recording, the government had spent 128 billion, I think to be exact, a couple years ago with small businesses. Of course, you know, their data doesn't come that fast. So we're a couple, you know, a year behind in that. But over the last six years, it has steadily increased the dollar value. Percentages have remained the same, but the dollar value of these classifications, these categories have increased to that. The government is spending uh, over $120 billion with small businesses. Don't you want to get your piece of the pie? A nice little piece would be delicious and very lucrative, okay? So there you have it. Now you know the types of certifications, the benefits, and you have tangible numbers that I just gave you to help you decide if you're leaving money on the table. Now, here's a little FYI for you. In most situations, it takes about 60 to 90 days to receive your certification. Is why I stress so much with you guys. You come to me and you're like, hey, I want to start doing government work. And then you put it off and you put it off. And then, oh my gosh, here's an opportunity that you want to bid. And now you want help in getting that everything done, the infrastructure set up. And it just does not happen that fast. You have to be proactive and start doing the work necessary to lay the foundation before the opportunity presents itself. Because if you wait until the opportunity presents itself, you're too late for that opportunity, okay? So keep that in mind and ask yourself, are you leaving money on the table? Are you leaving money on the table, okay? So just keep that in mind. And so I don't want you to wait. Don't wait until there's an opportunity. If this is something you know you want to do, start laying the groundwork today so that you're prepared for when the opportunity presents itself. And guess what? While you're waiting on certifications and things like that to come in, there's other things that you should be doing in your business to be proactive, right? And getting a jump start on becoming a government contractor. I always tell my clients that there is always work to be done. There is always work to be done. And so you should always be doing some type of work, moving your business forward so that you can secure some of those larger contracts, increase your profits, yes, and grow as a government contractor. Now, if you like to dive deeper into this, using your certifications to secure those larger contracts, 
uh, to make sure you're profiting in, in your business, then I want to encourage you, encourage you. Now is the time and the doors are open for the Contractors Edge Bootcamp where you're getting access to all of the course material. Plus, you get to come to a live four-week online boot camp where we're going to dive deeper into the procure procurement process of uh, finding opportunities, putting together your bid and proposals, how to break down those solicitations, the important pieces that will take you from where you're at to where you want to be is inside of the Contractor's Edge boot camp. So make sure you go check it out. I'll definitely put the link below and it's over at FeliciaStreeter.com forward slash boot camp. If you like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you're notified when new videos come out, when I go live here on the channel. And I encourage you, this is a time of service. Share this video with someone that you know is a small business owner. Because here's the thing, the government buys everything, just about. The only thing I say they really don't purchase is the people, the soldiers, right? They don't purchase those, but they buy everything to support them, okay? So if you know someone, don't you qualify them for government contracting. Let them qualify themselves through the processes and free resources that I have, or they can ask me and I can help them in determining if government contracting is viable for them. But don't you decide that because you just may not know enough about their business. So use this time as a time of service and share this out at least to a couple of other small businesses in your spectrum, okay? All right, so until next time, I'll see you right back here. Bye for now.